morning guys. Yesterday uh, we ended up moving the combine back over here next to Marv's on the uh, farm he calls Polzels here. This is Polzels West and we got Polzels East here. We're going to pick Polzels East. The 13 acres that we picked in two videos ago, uh, that's called Clarence's. That's Clarence's West and then we got Clarence's East at that field of corn is. And uh, we're going to move over to Clarence's East after we get done with Pozzles here. And uh, when we got the combine moved around, we did some work on it, just going over it and servicing it. And uh, I also got the privacy codes on the radios, at least on this radio and the MXT-115 in the combine. I will be talking about this radio and what the heck I installed under it later in a future video, probably uh sometime this week eventually i will talk to you guys about that i also installed the cameras the dakota micro ag cam uh cameras on the combine one in the grain tank one on the unload and one on uh the rear underneath that beacon light there i will be doing a tour of that and how i routed the wiring and everything later I know I have to uh, flip the camera over in the grain tank and the one on the rear. And uh, I know I got the one on the unload set right. But after that, it's just a matter of playing with them and adjusting them and uh, getting them set where we need them. So we're going to go ahead and open this field up. And uh, Marv and Austin got the auger set up on the bin that they're going to fill. And we're gonna get rolling today. So you guys saw us unload the uh, corn head off the uh, Yetter head cart. Now if you notice those devastators, we had them pinned up. We pinned them all up so that way we can get over those head carriers or those saddles that the corn head sets on on the head cart. So that means every time you unload and load, you do have to, at least for us, pin and unpin those devastators. Now like I said in a previous video, uh, it could just be because of the size of tire that we've got because I'm pretty sure duels would uh, make the combine set just a tiny bit higher allowing it to clear those uh, saddles and we wouldn't have to pin those up. Now that's just the case for us. Now that's just the experience that we've had with them. That's the literal only complaint I have about it. But otherwise, this thing is awesome. I know I've heard some guys talk that they've actually had to take the rolls, or some of the rolls, completely off their head in order for them to put it on their head cart. As you can see with this, all we have to do, at least for us, is pin those up so we can clear those saddles, and those devastators will set perfectly on that head with zero issues uh, loading and unloading that. Again, like I said before, I don't have GoPro mounts mounted on the corn head yet in order for uh, I, in order for me to get GoPro shots of those devastators yet. Uh, in a future video, I will have GoPro footage of them in action. I will be talking more about them and looking more at the job it does as far as breaking up that residue better. Hopefully he can make it up to the other end here and we can dump going both directions. I'll catch him going down that way and then I'll sit down there and wait and I'll catch him coming back this way and I'll have about eight or nine hundred bushel on the cart and then go dump and fill a tandem then. So that would work out awesome then. Need them tip ups. Definitely. Oh! Clear full. Question is, how deep is this? Oh, it is kind of deep. Suck her out of there. Let's go. I can tell you definitely next year we're putting tip-ups on this combine. It's clear full every round. Just a tiny bit of dribble out of the front corner windows 
and this thing is clear full every round. So two things dad realized today. We definitely need a, need a bigger grain cart and we definitely need to get the tip ups on the combine. Capcorn! Oh my god! Just completely missed it. He flooded the cab. Oh man. Yep, we need extensions. <laughs> oh god. Guess I get to clean it off though. He's not gonna crawl up there and clean that off later. <laughs> oh jeez. First cab corn of 2019. I guarantee you it will not be the last. Oh my god, look at it fly off there. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, you're full. <laughs> oh. Went off. Did the sensor never went or went off? Not too bad. Yeah. Is it working? tip-ups on the combine yeah we need those like yesterday <laughs> oh god like i said this isn't gonna be the first uh the last uh cab cord i guarantee it we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be flooding that cab here when we get over to the river dad claims that top sensor didn't uh go off in the cab i'm guessing it was just because that flapper wasn't pushed up all the way enough to uh, activate the sensor and let him know that, hey, grain tank is full. God. And, oh, getting close. Yeah, definitely need tip ups. So we ended up <clears throat> moving that sensor, moved it down one, because I figure that it's just not able to push that flap up high enough in order for it to uh, uh, activate and let them know that it's a full tank. So I ended up moving it down one and hopefully we won't have any more issues, but I can guarantee you that we will see more cab corn later this year. Looks like Grandpa came over to see what, what's going on today. Went ahead and moved this truck, that way it's easier for Marv to just come in here and back over there. Well, I got the cameras fixed on the combine. I flipped the grain tank one and I also flipped the, uh, the rear one. The auger one was perfect. Don't even need to touch that or position that, so that's awesome. For some reason though, when uh, Dad went to click the cameras on, to use it on this last round, it wasn't working. Like, none of the cameras would even pull up. And uh, I hopped on the JD link and remote accessed his display. And yeah, for some reason, the cameras won't even pull up. And I'm thinking Dad might have jiggled that harness that's in, that dis in, the, in the cab and uh, might have unplugged it. So I'll have to, when we stop here, and wait on another truck, I'll uh, have to get up in there and see if I can get that fixed because I really wanted the remote access his display and watch it dump on the go and check uh, check all the cameras out to make sure everything looks like it should. Well, I finally got the cameras working. I just, I don't know. I went in there and started the combine and all of a sudden they're working just fine. So I'm 
not entirely sure what the issue was, but at least they're working now. Dad wasn't really a big fan of the cameras at first. He didn't, he's like, ah, we don't even need those. There's no reason for that. And uh, after, you know, this round here, after uh, he finally started using them for the first time, dumping in the- Hey, go over and pick those ends off, one man on our side. He really likes being able to see inside the cart, that way he knows for sure if I'm empty or not without radioing to me. Plus, being able to watch the grain tank unload and uh, being able to see uh, the empty level of it without turning around and uh, checking or watching the auger. And uh, also... The the over there by our green band. So he really likes them. That's pretty awesome. He thinks it's, it's definitely worth having them. So definitely check into putting cameras on your combine if you don't have them already. There's not too much left in this 50 acre field. Uh, we're gonna probably just end up picking this today because Austin actually has to take off today for a little while, for about an hour or so. So things will definitely slow down a bit since Marv will just be running tandems then and unloading trucks all by himself. So the plan is, is to really just get this field done today and I don't, I highly doubt we'll move over to Clarence's but we'll see because there's 40 acres over on Clarence's and there's no way in the world we're going to get that done today especially if Austin has to take off but we'll see. Also trying to figure out what we're going to do tomorrow because Tuesday we have that equipment coming up and it's going to be around I believe just for that day at least I know the stuff from our dealer will just be there for that day I don't think the stuff from the other dealer uh, will be around for more than a day I believe that's just going to stay with us for a day also and uh, I'm hoping the beans will be ready over at the river hopefully they'll be ready on Tuesday if not we're going to have to hopefully see if we can push that back to like Thursday or Friday just keep on corn and um, I guess then move over to Clarence's more than likely tomorrow and pick that and then see where we're going to go from there. If we're going to move uh, over to another one of his fields or if we're going to move over to a piece that we custom farm for uh, a neighbor and uh, pick that, what we call Hefner's. There's about 90 acres there and all of that goes straight into the elevator. And that's the only corn that we have that really goes straight in. Otherwise, all of it's gonna be more than likely dry depending on uh, the moisture really. But I did check the corn over at the river and the corn over at the river looks, looks good for being planted June 3rd. And uh, I mean, obviously I don't think we're gonna set any records over there like what we did in 2017 because we alternate corn, we alternate that 300 acres, 150 corn, 150 beans, and we switch that 150 acres every year. And the field that we're on in 2017, we averaged 230, and the field that I checked this year, I think, will probably run about 205, 210. But I could be wrong. I did check the moisture on it. I did check the moisture on it though, and it is right at 28, 29, 30 percent. So definitely going to be a bit on that. understand this. He's getting the trucks back here quicker now. Last round, I believe. I believe last round. And uh, then we'll be done with Pozel West here and pretty much done here in Wanata finally. And probably going to move the clearances. I don't know. We may just end up leaving the combine here by Marv's house and uh, move tomorrow or decide what we're going to do, but possibly move the clearance. Officially done in Wanata.
custom made these hook points. Otherwise, we'd be hooking up here. We didn't like the angle, so we went straight and made that bracket. Works really nice. Well, it's clouding up. I didn't think it was supposed to rain. Though it seems like every time we move over to move over and do custom work, it always seems to want to rain. All right, I'm gonna head over to that other field. You'll need to bring that, take that head down 421, down 1500, and come up from the south. 10-4. I'm on the move right now with the corn head headed over to Clarence's. Like you heard, I'll have to go up 421 and come in off of 1500 and come in from the south in order for him to put the head on. There's about, I would say, eight or 900 bushel left on the cart, so that's at least one tandem load there. So we will be back later to pick up the cart. One thing I absolutely love about this Yetter Farm Equipment head trailer, it rides so smooth down the road. Plus it also pulls like there's nothing behind the truck. It is amazing how smooth this trailer rides down the road. But there's probably about 800 bushel on the cart right now and roading it down the road right now. I don't normally road it at all with anything in it typically just to try and uh, minimize any wear at all on this cart. And uh, the reason why I'm doing it right now and I'm only running 15 is because both tandems are uh, waiting to be unloaded there at the farm and or at Marv's, Marv and Norm's there. And uh, there's an empty one over here at Clarence's that I know for a fact Dad would at least have a tank full by now and at least have 400 bushel on it. So I'm gonna head over to Clarence's then and top off that truck whatever I can. Deer down, what do we got? 95.60 with a 30 foot auger head. 30 intro beams. There is a truck. That's what I thought. Truck inbound. He gets the box, I get a paper towel. I guess that's just how seniority works. In between catching dumps from the combine and loading tandems, I had a guy message me about that single lever joystick control that I took out of the 85 here back when we first got that tractor because originally, this tractor actually had a H480 John Deere loader on it, and when it went to auction, they separated the uh, the loader. They separated they separated the tractor from the loader, and never took the joystick out. So I took the time and took the joystick out when we brought it home, and then John Deere had to come out and I guess reprogram it because I didn't realize that. Uh, they had to reprogram it due to the hydraulics till after we took it out. So that way it would recognize that it did not have the joystick anymore. I think that's 
part of the reason why they didn't separate it, because they knew that would happen. I didn't think I'd ever get that thing sold, and I couldn't believe it when a guy messaged me and said, hey, do you still have that? And I'm like, heck yeah, I do. And he's like, well, sold. So, that's awesome. I did not, I did not think I'd ever get that thing sold. To be honest, guys, I have no idea how much we're going to get done tonight. I did not expect us to actually move over to Clarence's tonight. He has a, Marv has a uh, 16,000 bushel bin, and the last field we got about 10,000 off of, and there's no way in the world we're going to uh, fit everything off of this field in that bin. This will just end up going till uh, Marv wants to quit, or uh, he ends up filling that bin tonight. Alrighty, so Dad is emptying out the combine right now. I will finish loading that truck. Marv did say that bin is full, so he's going to have... All three trucks fully loaded tomorrow to take up to Malden. We will wrap this 10 acres up. And after that, I have no idea. I don't know if we're going to move over to Hefner's on ours. Or at least that custom piece that we have. That we custom farm. And uh, at least do the sand. And leave the low ground for later. And uh, since that all goes straight up to Union. Or Malden. Wherever he wants it to go. Or if we are going to move over to Max of one of Marv's, Marv's fields. Or if we're going to move over to one of the Porter County fields and pick that. Or move back over to Botsky's and pick that corn. I don't know yet. We'll find out first thing in the morning. And you'll see tomorrow's video on Tuesday. And this video will be releasing on Monday morning at 6 a.m. So... Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.